Welcome back, my computer dinner. Mmm. If you're wondering what my mouth is full of, it's YouTube's dick. Just like every other YouTuber with less than a thousand subs right now. I must tell you, their semen is salty and bitter in my throat. I don't like it. Um. How is that even different? Okay, it's it's not. Okay, it is different. Yeah, I'm gonna eat while I do this, cause it's taken over my life. I really need some kind of intervention. Mm. But instead, having recognized the problem that VR is for me, instead of withdrawing and, and trying to cope without VR, I bought a VR MMORPG, of course. Of course! Like how an alcoholic solves a hangover by drinking more booze. The logical answer. You know, and I sort of laughed at the idea that VR addiction would be a thing. Like, this sounds like a futuristic illness made up for science fiction stories. Until I heard about that guy in the Korean internet cafe who died after spending like 72 hours playing StarCraft. Then I realized if you add VR to that, those people are just gonna... That's, that's gonna straight up kill a lot of people. A lot of people. Probably it's for the best though. Get those eggs first. Here we go. Let Mother Nature be your guide. You know what always bothered me about the argument? That if something happens in nature, then it's okay. Like, there's gay animals in nature, so obviously it's, it's, you know, it's fine. But, you know, animals are also prolific rapists. Rape is natural. Murder. Murder is natural. I need to freeze that. This is what we were lacking from the last couple of episodes. It's environmental policies. Don't get me wrong, I'm 100% in favor of gay rights because it pisses off Christians. And I have no negative feelings towards gay people. I've never had any bad experiences with gay people. I've only had bad experiences with the Christians. Who, and specifically, it's not all of them. It's the small church evangelical ones. It's like how all terrorist attacks are committed by one specific denomination of Islam, which is not, which is why I'm not totally against all Islam. I'm, I'm against Wahhabism. I feel like that would temper the, the arguments and controversy a lot. If people would just recognize <coughs> it's one kind of Muslim committing all of the, of the attacks, that's conspicuous. And that makes it much more feasible politically and morally to wage war on them and just say, you know what? Okay. As long as we all agree that most Muslims are fine and we're not going to hassle them, then we can we can go out and just wipe out every Wahhabist Muslim. I think the only reason we don't do that, and the only reason there's no discussion on like Fox News of the fact that it's one kind of Muslim causing all the problems, is because Rupert Murdoch and his buddies are heavily invested in fossil fuels most of which we get from Saudi Arabia, which also finances the spread of Wahhabist Islam around the world. Fancy that! What a coincidence! I wonder how I get rid of the... plant on top of that book. 
But yeah, most of the Muslims you meet on the street have exactly the same values as the typical Southern Christian. They don't know that. Like, if they could be a fly on the wall in a Muslim household, they'd say, this looks awfully familiar. They're saying a lot of the same things that I do to my own kids. And I think that's also why they hate each other, is similarity breeds contempt. Whether they consciously know it or not, I think they object to one another because they see a competing religion doing the same kinds of things that they do. Oh, I need wood. Don't I always need wood? Pingus! Here we go. I'm gonna wait for that. Oh, the screams of terror are so delightful. Reminds me of my own screams when I at last learned the true nature of the social order of this world. And that, that solves a lot of problems. If you'll just be specific and don't condemn a whole group, but look closer and say, who's actually causing problems? Because we kind of fought a, a world war against a regime that ha had confused the small number of Jewish bankers that were causing economic problems in their country for all Jews everywhere. So that's kind of an example of why it's good to be specific about your condemnation and not just kill everybody. And that goes for Christians too, let's be fair. Let's be fair, the Westboro Baptist Church is a small number of people. And Evangelicals and Seventh-day Adventists are a relatively small number of people. It's always a small number of people causing the problems that afflict everybody else and ruin a religion or other movement for everybody else. And that's because the extremists are the ones who take control of any movement, because they care. They care the most. They show up for every meeting, they're the ones that you see with a megaphone agitating for violence. Because there's two kinds of people who join the movement. The first are people who see the potential of the movement to improve the world. They, they join the movement because of what it's for. The other kind of people join the movement because of what it's against. Because they hate whatever it's against and want to see that destroyed. It's like how most feminists want equal rights and they want equal treatment for women which is a good thing but then there are a small number of extremists who join it because they perceive it as an anti-male group and they have a chip on their shoulder against men and they ruin it for everybody else what's the solution i think if every group policed their own group if they turned inward and instead of being obsessed with persecuting outsiders and, and heaping hatred on people who are not a part of their group if instead they would focus on improving their own group and getting rid of the the elements within with inside of their group that destabilize it and give it a bad name because that's really what kills movements they die from the inside What do I know? I took out student loans to study game design. What the fuck do I know? Don't listen to me, kids. Don't be like me. Learn from my poor life choices. I am successful now, but literally only by total happenstance like I, I tumbled ass backwards into money I didn't inherit anything I just got on the ground floor of a, a website that I think is probably gonna replace YouTube in the long run and that turned out to be a very lucrative decision 
So if ever I pretend to be smart and to know anything, remind me that I, I've only been able to pay for my own life by, by luck. At least I know that. There's a lot of people who get wealthy by, by luck and they don't acknowledge it. They're like, well, if I got wealthy, I'm, it must be because I'm so smart. It must just be because I'm a smart guy who made good decisions and everybody who's poor made bad decisions. I know myself well enough to know that's not the case. I make dubious decisions on the daily. I tried to combine six microwave burritos in a large tortilla into a larger compound burrito thinking perhaps a fractally structured burrito would revolutionize the field of burritology. That's how I spend my time. Would you trust me? Would you trust any of my advice? If so, you're a fool. I don't trust my own advice. Usually I'm like, okay, whatever seems like a good idea to me, I'm gonna do the opposite. Because that's probably the right thing to do. And that's how I got where I am today. That's how things turn out well for me. It's like the George Costanza school of reverse self-help advice. Just do whatever the opposite is of what you would normally do. I think that'll keep me humble though. I'll never get so far up my own ass that I'm like, oh, I'm successful because I'm so smart. I'm successful because I'm so talented and clever. Because I know that's not true. It's 99% about being in the right place at the right time to capitalize on something before other people do. And the, the field becomes too crowded to get noticed and to get big. That's really the key. And if you miss the boat, don't despair. Because there's going to be something new. You just keep your eyes out for something new. And you don't always know what it's going to be. you got to take a risk. you got to take a risk on investing work into something that may fizzle out and amount to nothing. You don't know. But if you do it enough times, eventually you'll be successful. And you only really need to succeed once. Again, I'm giving advice. Don't listen to my advice. I'm a fool and a charlatan. A handsome, sexy charlatan. Part of that might be a lie. But which part? That's the other thing. Once you succeed at something that other people want to succeed at, suddenly they start seeking you out and contacting you and in inappropriate times and places. Like they try to find your phone number and they try to find your Facebook and they go and talk to you on Facebook. And it's like, I, I, I would feel like a bad guy if I was like, you know, fuck off, don't try to talk to me because who, who the fuck am I to say that am I some big important dude no I'm a nobody and nothing no, it, that hasn't changed money does not change the fact that I'm just a monkey in fabric body coverings like everybody else but at the same time I don't want to be the, the issue is that there's so many people who want to talk to me now who want me to collaborate with them, who want to somehow be connected to and attached to me so they can leverage my success for their own benefit. And I understand that. I, under I, was, I was right there. You have, you have to understand, I did that. I suffered in obscurity making zero dollars a week for a year, for, well not a year, for a month, I started making money after the first month, and it, it was it was barely anything. It was like thirty dollars, uh, thirty dollars a week after a month. 
And it took me a year to start making the, the kind of money I could live off of. It's very much like ha how it was to get started on YouTube early on. And it's only really possible to succeed, I think, early on when, when you don't have a lot of competition. Or it's still possible to succeed, but I think it'll take a lot longer now because people have to notice you. People have to, to talk about you and spread uh, by word of mouth the fact that they enjoy what you make. It just gets harder. It gets harder and harder. It's like uh, how it gets harder to mine Bitcoin. The fewer and fewer are left. I don't know how accurate an analogy that is. Probably not very. But I hope saying this will give those people what they want to, they want to know. I saved them. I saved them. But for how long? No, don't go there. The slug's there. Fuck. Fuck! I don't want him to die. Find artifact. Why do I need an artifact to build something I've built a thousand times before? These guys have shitty memories. You built all these things on the last level. Is it because I keep feeding you mushrooms? You'll find any way to blame this on me, won't you? I'm only mad because you're right. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna need a tavern right the fuck away. I still need an artifact. Where is it? There's gotta be a book around here somewhere. That's how they encourage you to explore the environment, insofar as you're able to explore something smaller than yourself. Roy Moore knows all about exploring something smaller than yourself. Giggity, giggity. Is that still topical? Did I miss the boat on making Roy Moore jokes? So apparently there's a flat earther who's building a rocket. Oh fuck. Okay, he's dead. Who's building himself a rocket ship. So that he can prove the earth is flat. And I'm 100% sure it's going to kill him. And I'm okay with that. That's the definition of a problem that solves itself. His dumb ass will fly in an arc and crash and die. And we'll all be better off for it. Nobody should cry for him. This is, that's... It sounds edgy. But it's nature taking its course. That's how it's supposed to work. If it hadn't been for our ancestors thinking it was a good idea to fucking try to have sex with a mountain lion or whatever, or a saber-toothed tiger, then the dumb the dumber monkeys, or I guess apes, would not have died out. And we would still be living in caves today. I guess that's insensitive to people who actually do live in caves. There's like that one Australian town where everybody lives underground because it's too fucking hot. Which begs the question why live there, but it, I guess it was an opal mine at one point. And then after the opal mine dried up, there was all that infrastructure built to support people, so they just kept living there. It's like IRL Dwarf Fortress, only they're Australians. So even worse than dwarfs.
That's so cute. That's so cute. How they like wriggle up on top of the giant egg. I appreciate they're born fully grown up and ready to work. It's like a libertarian's wet dream. Employees that just self-replicate without any training. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be a dream come true? Can I turn that into it? Yes, I can. Yes, no, I can't. In fact, I can't. Never mind, completely disregard what I just said. What can I turn this into? Nothing. Nothing at all. I need more wood. Okay, you go get more wood. This game's really about being, about being attentive towards what these creatures need and filling those needs in a timely fashion. There we go. That's the book I needed. Yes! Finally. I can build one of these and heal my little fuckers. The five-year plan, rapid expansion, great leap forward. Of course, the great leap forward actually means the government's about to kill all the intellectuals. I can be, I can turn moot halls into three different kinds of things, can't I? So there's no reason not to build a shitload of them. Resources. Moot halls can become a bunch of different things. They're really handy things, aren't they? There's two more places to build buildings so far. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. I, I wish I could joke about Trump, but it just makes me depressed. Fight. Fight and die for your god. For I am the god of peace, yet I command war and don't explain why it's okay sometimes to kill. Okay, it's okay to kill when it's expedient for my religion, okay? It's that simple. Oh, it's a smorgasbord over here. Look at how much I gained just from that. Everything is held back by the absence of wood. I really need that tavern yesterday.
Nope. Quarryman. What would the multiplayer for this be like? Would there be competing gods with their own religions? I feel like there would be, uh, if you ever played Insult Simulator, there'd be an Insult Simulator minigame where your believers argue with each other about whose god is real and whose religion is right. And you'd have to like assemble sentences from a pool of words and try to come up with the most convincing argument or devastating insult. You realize you're going straight to hell, right? Into my mouth. Into my mouth. Um. Yes, I can feel myself growing stronger. Especially my horrible and both of my wicked yarbles. I can't use sun on that. Why not? How come? Why is that like that? I should be able to actually build some shit now, right? Tavern. There we go. Central location. That's good for a hospital, which is basically what that is. Now we're really starting to get somewhere. I need a farmer. Gwern. That's a fine, tis a fine name. Tis a fine name, me laddie. You, I will assign to be a woodsman or a farmer. Farmer. I really need snow. This is really chill. I don't know if I've said that enough. This is a chill game. I like simpler versions of games. Like, I don't like Echo Arena. It's overwhelming. I like Rip Coil, which is a simpler version of the same concept. There's different tiers in the market for different levels of complexity of the same concept. I think. Like, this is a simpler version of Black and White, basically, or Populous. It doesn't require so much of so much focus. I can just relax and let my little dudes die of neglect and my own stupidity. There we go. Uh-oh. Nope. Hang on. Hang on there. Oh, I need more resources. I need specifically this, whatever this is. How come pumpkins don't need sunlight?
Well, shit, there's not enough of them. I hope all of you are ready to die. I need whatever this shit is. I'm not gonna survive this night, probably. Maybe I'm just being pessimistic. I don't know. They make pig noises, too. They make cow and pig noises. Have we been right all along to eat cows and pigs? Have they in fact been evil this entire time? I dare say the answer is yes. There's many things I dare say. It's nice not being famous because you could say controversial things and it has no impact on you. Where are they gonna take away my my YouTube earnings? The zero dollars I make from YouTube? They have nothing to threaten me with. This is not going well. This is not going well. Minor. I am glad I made so many warriors. However, that guy needs to drink right now. This is fun. This is a lot like Baldi's. Like imagine this game only little fat bald men instead of avatar cat people. I'm, I'm glad this is an obscure game because I know if it wasn't furries would have already drawn so much horrible perverted artwork of these creatures. And they're so innocent. Look at their big stupid eyes. They don't know. They don't know this is hell. And that's a simulation created for my enjoyment. Temple. Need resources. Uh, wood. wood altar. Can that get me more wood? That would be helpful. If anything, I'm actually kind of miffed that it ends as quickly as it does. Because it, it kind of makes me want to build the society up as much as I can. But they've designed it so that it ends a level before you can run out of shit to do. Which is clever, I guess. Now turn this moot hall into a clog maker. I need miners. For that. Oh, dope. I can have two forests at once. How did I not notice that? Probably my brain problems. The same reason I don't notice anything. Hmm. Need resources. Okay. No, not a warrior. Talk to people. There, are, There's help for your problems. PTSD can be overcome. Just not by you. Let's see. I should wait. I need resources for all three of those. What is he? 
He's a miner and he is mining. Quarry man is quarrying. Whatever, the, if that's the fucking verb. No and the miner. Okay, here you go. Mine, how about that? I am a just god. I'm a kind god. Bring me beef jerky for my tum tum. For I hunger. What does a god need with beef jerky? Shut up, that's what. Wait a minute. Can I upgrade this? No, I need more re I always need resources for shit. It's mainly these rocks that I don't have enough of. So, the next dude to be born... Wherever he was, I, I saw an egg come down. He ought to be a, uh... What the fuck is that? No, don't let him get away. What the fuck is that thing? What, no, what the fuck is that? Yes, there we go. I think I just saved myself a lot of trouble. I got an egg! Why did I get a fried egg from that? What? Was the monster carrying a perfectly prepared fried egg? What's the lore that explains that? Perhaps it's just one of those mysteries we're never meant to know the answer to. If I could actually interact with all these other islands, that would be awesome. If there was like a war mode later on where I had to build cannons and shit to attack those islands and make them sink. That would be fairly cool, I think. But again, my ideas are not the best. This has not done any hatching. What is this? How am I supposed to hatch with this building? Does somebody go in there? Do I shine sunlight on it? How does that work? It's not clear. Potatoes! Potatoes, yes! <laughs> Potato! I need more wood. What are you? You're nothing. Let me make you into a woodsman. That's the hard truth of it in this society. You're nothing if you don't have a job. And I don't mean a hand job. Take it from me, a hand job does not mean a job where you work with your hands. I replied to a Craigslist wanted ad under that misapprehension, but I soon learned how terribly wrong I was. You can earn money though, so it's kind of similar. I like how they go in there, listen to some music, and get drunk, and it heals life-threatening wounds. Yes! Ha ha ha! All praise Schmandrangulon! Masterer of simple baby games! Bead! Indeed. Bead indeed. Uncaring. I would be angry, but that's... That's accurate. 